On a cold night in December 1996, British schoolboys Patrick Warren and David Spencer set out on the short journey to the home of one of the boy's older brothers. Patrick was riding his new bicycle and David was on foot. Despite having told their parents that they'd head straight to their destination, the boys instead spent time walking the streets of their neighbourhood, eventually arriving at a local Shell petrol station. The pair talked the station attendant into giving them a free snack and left shortly after. The station attendant watched as Patrick and David left the shop and set off into the night. This would be the last time either boy was ever seen. This is the story of the case of Patrick Warren and David Spencer. Best friends Patrick and David lived in Chelmsley Wood, a working class area in Solihull in the West Midlands region of England, eight miles outside of central Birmingham. 11 year old Patrick, known affectionately as Paddy, was one of seven siblings and came from a large Irish family. He was known for his sense of humour. He particularly enjoyed playfully winding up his mum by mocking her Irish accent. 13 year old David was a keen boxer and his mum, Christine, described him as, quote, an adorable, lovely lad. Like many young boys from deprived communities, David did display some behavioural challenges. He'd been in youth court on multiple occasions and had also been excluded from mainstream education at the age of 12. Despite their difficulties, both boys were known to be cheeky but likeable. On Christmas Day 1996, the day before their vanishing, Patrick and David had spent the full day playing together at David's house. Patrick had received a new bicycle and wanted to show David. The boy spent the day playing with the pool table that David had been gifted for Christmas and eating leftovers. The next day, the boy spent all day playing outside. A police officer would later report having seen the boys playing with a larger group of children in a nearby park that afternoon. The officer had warned the kids not to play on the frozen pond. At close to midnight, the boys arrived home. Both Patrick and David told their mothers that they intended to sleep over at Patrick's older brother's house, which was a short walk away. The pair left, Patrick on his red Apollo bicycle and David on foot. Instead of heading straight to their destination, the boys spent some time roaming the streets of their neighbourhood. They eventually made their way to a local Shell petrol station. There, they talked the station attendant into giving them a free packet of biscuits. It was approximately 12.45am. The attendant would later report that the boys headed off in the direction of Chelmsley Shopping Centre. This is the last time Patrick and David were confirmed to have been seen by anyone. The next day, after learning that the pair had not arrived at his brother's house, David Warren, another of Patrick's siblings, began to search for the boys. When it became clear that the boys were nowhere to be found, the police were called, and the formal search for Patrick and David began. Police knocked on doors and spoke to locals. They searched areas and buildings where the boys were known to play, and appeals were made in the local press. Police initially suspected that David and Patrick had run away, going as far as to offer a £500 reward for information on anyone who may be sheltering the boys. The petrol station worker came forward to report his encounter with the pair, and this was soon established as the last known sighting. Days later, and despite there being no further reported sightings, police were still briefing the local press and community that there was no reason to assume the boys had come to harm. They repeatedly referred to the boys as being streetwise. Press coverage at that time did not extend beyond features in local news, and no national attention was given to the case. The day after the boys' disappearance, Patrick's new bike was found abandoned near the commercial bins behind the petrol station where they were last seen. However, it would take police several weeks to realise that the bike belonged to Patrick. The murder of 17-year-old Nicola Dixon, around 8 miles away in Sutton Coldfield, pulled media attention away from Patrick and David's case, and police would later admit that resources were directed away from the search for the boys to aid in the murder investigation. The murder of Nicola Dixon was eventually solved and her killer jailed. The cases were found to be in no way linked. A month later, the police held a press conference and the boys' mothers appealed for them to come home. In April 1997, five months after their vanishing, 
the boys would become the first missing children to appear on milk cartons in a campaign launched by the charity the National Missing Persons Helpline, supported by UK food retailer Iceland. This is when the boys would become known as the Milk Carton Kids. Patrick and David's case would also feature on popular UK TV crime show, Crime Watch. Despite this coverage, no information was garnered in the investigation and the boys' case would begin to turn cold. It wasn't until six years later, in 2003, when a new lead would emerge. West Midlands Police announced that they had arrested a 37-year-old man in connection with the case, though the man was later bailed and has never been charged. Police released no information on this lead, but David's mother told local media that the man had been arrested after a letter he sent from prison was eventually traced back to him. In the letter, the man claimed the boys were buried in a wooded area, though this claim proved to be false. In 2006, to mark the 10-year anniversary of the disappearance, West Midlands Police launched Operation Stenley. A full review of the case was undertaken. A lake that had been previously searched was searched again. Some fields on the edge of Chelmsley Wood were explored, as was a nearby mine shaft. A full forensic search of the boys' homes was carried out. Checks were made on the sex offenders register, which didn't exist in 1996. From this, local offenders were questioned and ruled out. It was around this time that police announced they believed the boys were dead and were officially treating the case as a no-body murder. In the same year, Patrick and David's case was once again featured on Crime Watch. Again, no leads were forthcoming. From the renewed police investigation, a suspect was formally named. Convicted child killer Brian Field was discovered to have been living in the local area at the time that the boys vanished. Field was convicted in the early 2000s for the 1968 murder of 14-year-old boy Roy Tuttle. Roy had been sexually assaulted and strangled to death. In 1996, following the development of DNA technology, a partial sample was taken from Roy's clothing and uploaded to a new national DNA database. Four years later, in the year 2000, a hit came back that matched to a drunk driving arrest in Chelmsley Wood in 1999. The drunk driver was none other than Brian Field. Following his arrest for Roy Tuttle's murder, it was found that Field had prior offences for gross indecency and the attempted abduction and assault of two teenage boys in Scotland. Field had previously served a four-year sentence for the attempted abduction in the early 1980s. It was also found that Field had actually already been questioned in relation to Roy's murder decades earlier, but had denied any involvement. Field was eventually convicted and sentenced to life in prison. In the end, he accepted that the evidence against him was overwhelming. In 1996, Field worked as a gardener and handyman in the Solihull area and lived just miles from where Patrick and David vanished. It's highly likely, in fact, that he even used the petrol station that the boys were last sighted at. Police questioned Brian Field at Old Sutton Prison in 2006. Field denied any involvement in the boys' case, and with insufficient evidence, no charges could be made. Police also dug up a piece of land that Field was known to have used as a dumping ground for work materials and waste. This excavation turned up no evidence. Although police were not able to find anything matching Field to the disappearance of Patrick and David, he remains a person of interest in the case. To summarise, Brian Field lived and worked just miles from where Patrick and David lived and disappeared. In 2006, he was serving life in prison for the murder of a teenage boy. In the 1980s, he served a prison sentence for the abduction of two teenage boys he worked a job that gave him access to the tools and means to dig deep holes. He was from Solihull and knew the area well. And the incident that brought about his eventual conviction was his drink driving arrest in Chelmsley Wood, the estate where Patrick and David lived. It should also be noted that double abductions are incredibly rare. All of this raises a serious question about how Brian Field was not initially suspected or questioned in the 1996 police investigation. Brian lived in a caravan. He was a loner. He lived off grid and took odd jobs, cash in hand. Police files from the 60s and 80s were in paper form 
and the sex offenders register didn't even exist. Brian served an incredibly lenient sentence for the attempted double abduction and was then released into the world with no tracing. It seems he was able to slip under the radar and that there was a chance that in the early investigation into Patrick and Davis' disappearance, police may not have even known who Brian Field was. In 2016, to mark the 20 year anniversary of the boy's disappearance, a fresh appeal for information was launched. Once again, no information was garnered, though West Midlands police vowed to never give up the search. In 2020, 600 yards from the field that was searched in relation to Brian Field's potential involvement in the case, human remains were found. The remains were not a match for Patrick or David, and there is currently no further information in relation to this. In June 2021, a documentary on the case was released by Channel 4. It featured criminologist Professor David Wilson, who had studied the case for years. Professor Wilson alleges that Patrick and David's class and social status affected how the police treated their case. He believes that had the boys been middle-class white girls, then their case would have received more attention and police resource. Professor Wilson also claims that the focus on the boys being streetwise led police to underestimate just how vulnerable the two children were. Patrick and David's case is cited as an example of what social science refers to as missing white woman syndrome, whereby cases involving young, attractive, white, middle class women and girls are given more media attention and police resource. Recently, in June 2021, the developer of a £3.5 million home where Brian Field previously worked as a gardener reported to a local newspaper a conversation he'd had with the property's former owner. The developer, who asked to remain anonymous, recounts a strange interaction the property owner had had with Field back in the mid-90s. The man recalls the owner of the property having tasked Field with a minor garden landscaping job. The property owner later found Field digging a deep trench. The scale of the work baffled the man. In fact, Field dug to such a depth the brickwork close to the trench later suffered subsidence. It was also noted by the property owner that Field, who usually cycled to work, instead drove his pickup truck to work that day. The developer reported this potential lead to local police, but it is not known what police action is currently being considered, if any or if this information is even of any significance at all. What happened to Patrick Warren and David Spencer after leaving the Shell petrol station at 12.45 in the early morning of December 27, 1996 remains a mystery and the case unsolved.